welcome back. Before we get started with today's video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and leave a comment down below. All right, so I'm here with Catherine Erlen, who is an actor based in London. Uh, Kat, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. Yeah, just enjoying being at home, being out of London. It's been really weird, but it's been nice to have a little bit of a break. But I'm getting bored now. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on online theatre? I think it's incredible and it's not obviously as good as the real thing, but as an actor who can't be doing that at the moment, it's definitely been an amazing kind of second best to just keep me occupied either by being involved in it or just watching what other people have come up with. Um, it's just been something for like the acting community in general, I think, just to feel a part of something. Um, it's just amazing how like creative and innovative people are when they really are challenged to be, I think. Um, so yeah, I've kind of wanted to try and support everything that everyone's doing. Um, and yeah, it's been exciting. It's just been nice to see it kind of live on through a time when everything's shut down. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think it's an amazing idea. Just doing what you can. You were a part of the uh, Ethereal Theatre's kind of like monologue slam series. Uh, so yes. How, how did you hear about that opportunity? So that was through um, Mark, who um, runs it with uh, Dana. And some other of my friends from Art said were part of it. And it's something I really wanted to do. Um, although it was quite a challenge, I was actually really nervous for it. Um, I just, yeah, wanted to be creative in this time when usually I'd be, you know, either auditioning or taking part in workshops. I was supposed to be rehearsing at the time for a project. Um, so it just gave me something to work towards really, whilst all the days were kind of like blending into one. <laughs> it was nice to know that there was something upcoming. Um, so yeah, it was just through, through Mark, um, asked if I wanted to be part of one of the weeks. Um, so I said, yeah, cause I'd watched a couple of the previous weeks um, and they were really good. It was just really entertaining and yeah, it was just, um, good to have something to work towards really. Hmm. So the week you took part, you, you were part of the, um, the ladies night. Um, oh, well, that, that yeah. was your night. And the <laughs> night you took part, you did, um, two contrasting monologues. You did, um, a Shakespeare piece and you did mm -hmm. uh, a contemporary piece. Yeah. Uh, what inspired you to do those two pieces or were you looking to kind of like explore a certain characteristic? Yeah, so the contemporary piece I did um, was Made in Spain by Tony Grounds. And it's a piece that I used to use for auditions, uh, kind of my first year of auditioning for drama schools. And I loved it. And it kind of um, made its way out of my like rep because I'm always looking for new material. And it's something I just wanted to revisit, really. And I thought it would be really good um, for that kind of platform, just like entertaining. Um, it's a comedy piece. And then... Mark just asked if I could do two if possible so then I just wanted a contrast um so I dug out my Shakespeare and yeah I just love those two pieces together again when I was auditioning I used those um to contrast because they are so different which is kind of the challenge in a situation like that and I guess it's similar to an audition um when you just run them back to back to kind of hop out of one character and into another um but yeah it was um it was a good challenge and i enjoyed it so i basically started with my contemporary piece and then wanted something to work alongside of that so that's how i picked those <laughs> i think what one of the interesting things about the whole kind of like monologue slam series when on the nights people decided to do two monologues uh being able to see like the actors transition between mm -hmm their two characters, like being, being actors ourselves and having trained, like we're kind of used to that, but I was kind of like seeing it from like an audience kind of like perspective where, you know, yeah. if an audience member goes to the theatre, they know they don't necessarily see that kind of like behind the scenes stuff. Mm. And that, that's kind of interesting, I thought. That was one of the... Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's um, exactly how I felt from watching people in the previous weeks, how it was really strong when they did have two really contrasting pieces um 
so that is something I wanted to to do and then kind of not having the audience reaction was weird though to just you didn't want to take too long kind of transitioning um but yeah I think it, I think it worked just sort of took a moment in between each piece you said uh, earlier that um you were feeling like nervous beforehand mm. would you <laughs> if you were doing like a, a live show in front of an audience was it the same kind of nerves or was it like a different kind of nervousness yeah, I think it was different and because I, I definitely um, still get very nervous if I'm doing something to a live audience but I think with this it was a mixture of like partly technical issues because I'm so bad with technology so I was so scared that I don't know my phone was going to go off in the middle of it or the light would like blow or something and I'd just be stuck there um, whilst it's all live um, but none of that happened fortunately it was all fine um so I think there was partly that and then I don't know really it was just I'd never done anything like it before anything that I've done in front of a camera has been um pre-recorded so I think it was just that extra pressure of that like unknown territory knowing that you're being watched but not you're not with that audience and if something had gone wrong you would have sort of had to just recover and not I don't know seeing how it's going down at the time sort of thing um but saying that, it was so supportive. They had uh, like a live stream of comments and people were really lovely on there. A really nice community. And it was so professionally done. Like Dana was um, hosting and yeah, and everyone did really well. I don't think anyone sort of froze or, you know, I know for a fact other people that night were really nervous as well. Um, but I don't think you could tell. I think everyone just did really, really well. And it was... Um, yeah, it was a really good thing to be involved with. Really fun. And uh, of course, for your pieces, did you did you warm up differently? Um, gosh, I can't remember. I think I did. Um, funny enough, I think I'd done a Zoom warm up that morning um, with Jonathan, our old voice teacher at Artset. Um, so it kind of felt how I would warm up for a stage production. Um, possibly not as much just because of the um the space i guess was a lot smaller that i was in um i was just literally sat in the corner of like one of our rooms in the house um so yeah i think i was much more aware of the camera being on my face rather than like the rest of me so although i was energized i think i was doing just more with my face and more i was just running lines i was just sort of nervous that i was gonna freeze in some way um so I think it was just repetition of that. So the warm ups I was doing were very grounded in the text, um, which I would do anyway, but possibly a little bit more physical if it was um, live theatre, I would say. Did you have any pleasant surprises? Because you've said like you, you, you're not the best with technology, but did anything <laughs> kind of like surprise you that you were like, oh, OK, that wasn't so bad? Um, yeah, I think I was just pleasantly surprised that it all went smoothly to be honest because I think I was planning to do it on my laptop and then Mark said he wanted it on the phone for some reason I can't remember why that was so that you could have the screen up for YouTube maybe to kind of follow it on the laptop um so yeah I think I was probably just overcomplicating it in my head you know as soon as it was on airplane mode it was fine but then I was scared that I wouldn't receive the call or something so I had to have a do not disturb <laughs> And um, like, I'm just honestly ancient when it comes to technology. So it was, I feel like I have learned so much in this lockdown about like all the different Zoom settings. Um, Cause I was teaching online as well. So I was having to like create the meetings and send them out and Zoom teaching has loads of different things you can do, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, again, it was a challenge in that way for me to just commit to doing it and then prove that I, can and that it's really not that complicated uh you talked about zoom teaching what what kind of teaching mm. uh, ha, were, have you been able to do over zoom yeah so i was just doing a bit of um singing teaching but i went to a couple of kind of online seminars when they were talking about how you could do drama teaching online um because mine was simple it was a call just like this just me and one other student um but i learned a lot about it in case i do have to continue that next term because I was thinking about doing some children's workshops um, and it's really clever how you can use all the like breakout rooms so you could if you've got say a class of 20 you can split them up into 
threes, fours, whatever, in their little breakout rooms, um, as you would in a rehearsal space, if you know, you send all the kids off to different areas in the um, building. And yeah, and just obviously like all the safety measures that you need online. So um, ensuring that people are who they say they are and no one else can get into the meeting. Um, yeah, lots of things, making sure there's just sort of one communication platform so that there's no sort of bullying going on anywhere and just lots of things you wouldn't have even thought of that you wouldn't have to think of because obviously in the room it's so much easier. Um, but I did do some um, videos that I put up on YouTube, which again was easier in a way because you're not obviously interacting at the time yeah. with the kid on Zoom, but then it kind of made it harder with material because there's only so much that the kids can do on their own with the class, you know, drama is just such group work and trying to find exercises that wouldn't get boring or, you know, put a child like out of their comfort zone, just doing it in their lounge with maybe parents watching or whatever was, yeah, it was challenging. But again, um, I got some good feedback on that sort of mainly like friends, kids got involved and gave me feedback and then I, sent it out a bit further but um yeah it's just been nice to connect with other people actually doing that like twitter's been really great for it lots of other teachers um sharing material um and on the whole i just feel like everyone's been so supportive so it's um i've definitely learned a lot about technology and like how many options there are out there and i think it's probably going to be something that continues after lockdown um when i think about where I was kind of traveling before you know to the other side of London to teach when actually you really don't need to and it saves everybody's time just to hop online and do a, a zoom call um because I was worried there might be like a delay with it as well and we didn't experience that the connection was always fine um and yeah it, it just seemed way more practical really especially for me and I think for the the kids as well because we could kind of shift things last minute if we were working around any homeschooling or anything like that so yeah it's definitely been an eye-opener okay um Kat thank you so much oh, thank uh, you <laughs> before we go where can people find you on social media so I'm on um Twitter I'm on Instagram and my handle is the same for both of those it's Catherine with C underscore Amy 25 okay all right, so I'll put that down in the description of this video. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you so much, Tenji. And uh, we'll see you soon.